Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC and we're finally back in the workshop and we are going to be making a start on this which is my latest project which is the Seagull EA300L Extra. Um, it's been really cold here in, in the UK um, so probably not as cold as uh, many countries get but it's certainly cold for us, it's been about minus one, minus two so it's not particularly comfortable in the workshop. I haven't got any fancy heating systems or anything like that uh, in my workshop, so it gets pretty damn cold in here. Um, but it's warmed up again now. Um, so this is episode one of the build, and we've basically got to start by putting the engine mount on this. Uh, and uh, So get the engine mount on here, and then obviously get the engine lined up on the mount. So before we get stuck in, I just want to say thanks very much for subscribing. If you enjoy my video, then please give them a, a like, give them a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, and many of the viewers who watch my channel haven't subscribed, then you could really help me out by subscribing. It doesn't cost you a penny. And if you're into all things fixed wing, um, Boltzer, Nitro, uh, EDFs, and uh, a little bit of FP, fixed wing FPV as well, I, I get into as well, uh, then you want to subscribe to the channel. So, with all that said, let's get this onto the workbench and let's start work. Right then, so this is where I'm starting from. I'm not starting right from the beginning because if you watch my unboxing video, um, I a long time ago when I, when I actually bought this model, which was a couple of years ago, I actually started going through this and I've already done some uh, hinging. So they're all the hinging's done of the surfaces. Um, I do need to epoxy in the rudder horn, uh, which I've not done yet, so that's a job that I need to do. Um, but what I'm going to get started on now, as I've mentioned, is getting this engine mount set up and, and get it mounted on this firewall here. So it should be fairly straightforward um, because it's all drilled out and they've even put the blind nuts in on the back here and they've put some um, they've, they've put some epoxy on them as well, which is quite nice. So this is the engine mount pack. It's designed for a 46 as well, this is, so um, the engine I've got is the same size as a 46, although <coughs> it's slightly bigger, excuse me. Now then, that's a problem, straight away. I appear to have four washers, but only two bolts, brilliant. Okay, I've managed to find the bolts, thankfully. So we're gonna mount these on like this so that's going to be the bottom one there and then the top one's just going to go on there so fairly straightforward now obviously it does say to lock tight these but just for now um, i'm just going to get it screwed into place and just make sure everything looks okay and then if it does then i'll uh, take these back off and and uh, lock tight it So let's just get these on here. Okay, that's got those tightened up. So let's uh, get the engine out. Right, let's get the engine uh, offered up then. Oh yeah. That fits absolutely perfect. So just show you that there. So that's spot on. It's not uh, bending the bearers out or anything like that. That's uh, that's a great fit. So we just need to measure according to the instructions. Uh, a little bit further up. So it says that the uh, the back of the prop, um, I can never remember what this bit's called, the front of the uh, prop guide uh, needs to be 110 mils from this section here. So if we just get this measured, so it actually needs to go quite far back actually, which it probably is going to be a bit of a problem is it? No, maybe not. Mm. 
I just thought the needle valve there might catch. Um, oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay, that's bottom like that, and I think what I'll do is I'll just put a couple of marks at the front of these engine bearers here. So we know that's where we've got to line it up to. Um, and then I can, I can mark the holes as well. I do have a special tool for mounting or marking um, where to put the pilot holes basically. And this is, uh, I think this is a um, Great Plains tool, I think, or a Dubro, I can't quite remember. Might, no, it won't be Great Plains, I think it is a um, Dubro. And basically this allows you to, this is like a self-centering punch uh, and you push, it's spring loaded, you push the drill out there and it allows you to mark this perfectly central. So it's really handy. So let me give that a go on here. So we just put it in like that, so it centers itself. And then we can push down. And this side's a bit trickier because we've got this needle valve tube, but I'll just take that off. Okay, let's see what we've got. Yep, let's mark those. I'll just mark this side with a pencil just to uh, make it a bit more obvious. And it does act as um, a centre punch for the drill as well, so you can get your drill nice and straight. So it's a good little tool this is. Definitely recommend one of these if you mount engines. Uh, the other thing I've got to do with this engine is for some, well, I guess it's just the model that they had it, because obviously it's second hand this is, they've got the throttle um, lever oops, upside down, in my opinion. It should be the other way around, so I've just got to uh, take that off and turn it upside down, but that's fairly straightforward. There's just a little, actually the screw inside, oh, it's just the little grub screw here. Um, let's see if you can see that just about. So I've just got to undo that and twist that round. But that's no biggie but yeah that fits on there an absolute treat so that's really nice really pleased with that um so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to lock tight these so i'll take these back these out lock tight them um then i'm going to get my i'm going to take the canopy off uh, and i'm going to get a bit more fuel proofer inside here because they have fuel proofed all the front around here but they haven't fuel proofed inside where the actual tank goes so i'm just going to put some extra stuff in there so uh, this is what i use just a bit of this jp satin fuel proofer so i'll get those bits done and then once i've done that my next job then is i'm going to get the fuel tank set up um, so i'll show you when i start that okay so i've got that a coat of fuel proofer inside the fuel tank bay there so it's a bit of a top tip that um, if you've <clears throat> not bought one of these ARFs before, sometimes some of the VQ models I've had, they're not fuel proofed at all. Um, but this one was at least fuel proofed on the outside. <clears throat> but definitely um, get yourself a tin of fuel proofer, something like that, and um, a sacrificial brush because these things go rock hard after the fuel proofers uh, gone off. So just get a brush that you don't mind throwing away. Um, and just give it a good coat all around the fuel bay. I haven't, like I say, I haven't done this because it, it, is, uh, it is done, so that's good. But uh, certainly all around here because it might be something if, you've not, if you're not used to nitro and this is your first nitro model, you may not um, know to do that. And you'll soon find that, you know, if you spill a little bit of glow fuel or something inside this fuel bay, it, the bolts are really soaks it up and eventually it just completely ruins the bolts uh, and ply inside here. Um, so next job is, I've got the fuel tank, so we've got to get this set up. Um, so what we've got in this little pack, we've got just the tank itself and then the bung 
and the, the clunk, there's no fuel tube. So I just need to get a bit of fuel tube. Well, I've got some spare just to make sure that clunk goes right to the back of the tank. So I'll get that done. Um, the only thing that is a little bit annoying is that, and I don't think I've seen this before, but it's got plastic tubes on it. Um, what it says on the instructions is to use a cigarette lighter to heat one up and point that up to the top because that's going to be your vent pipe. Um, so I need to, uh, yeah, get a cigarette lighter and just, uh, I don't think I've got one in the shed, um, but just uh, get that bent. Um, and then the other one, actually it's probably going to be these two because you've got one is going to attach to the so they both want bending up so one's going to be the fill tube and one's going to be yeah so I just need to bend one of these up which is going to be the um, that'll be where that's the vent pipe basically where I'll attach the exhaust to and then the other one I'll attach the clunk to um, and then the other one I won't actually use so I'll probably just um, melt the end of that there and, and just seal it up um, because I use the little Dubro filler um, quick uh, I think they're called quick fill valves um, which goes on the, the line to the carburetor uh, and I'll just attach that to the bottom of the the um, cowl and you just pull it out fill it up and push it back in it works really well it does remind me that I need to buy one I need to order one for this so basically you don't need to bother with the fill tube it just makes it a little bit easier and I did say on the um, unboxing video that I wasn't going to use the fuel tank because I like Dubro tanks which is true but um, what I didn't realize is this one does come with this mount which is quite nice um, so that just fits in there uh, and then you attach some elastic bands that go around here and it kind of secures it in place. It's not a bad system to be honest. Um, see if I can show you a picture of it. So it does sort of show you here. So you, you glue this former in place. Um, this one that they've supplied and then the elastic band just goes around here to secure that in place. So I think I will, I will use it. Just got to see where this uh, where this goes. Okay, well that seems a bit weird to me because you've got these slots on the bottom and then these ears on the side. But if you look at the fuselage, there's the uh, so there's the two slots for the bottom, but they don't line up with either. It could go against here, or that square, you see that square section there, it could go with the, the ears lined up on that back edge, but then again, that doesn't line up with those two marks either for those tabs to go in. So, a bit weird that. So yeah, it looks to me like they've they've got it lined up with those two squares, but then the bottom won't fit in that's nowhere near those tabs so that's got to be a mistake they must have put this floor in wrong which is a pain so I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut these off and then line it up use these tabs on the side to line it up with the back of this so Seems a bit weird that does, but um, that's the only way I think it's going to work. So I'll get the razor saw out and uh, get that cut. Okay, so got that uh, support there mounted in. So I did end up cutting the tabs off the bottom, but I've lined it up with that square sort of hole that you can see there. So the, the, the ears on it or tabs on the side, whatever you want to call them, are pushed against that. So that should be good enough. Um, and then I've bent that up a little bit, just bent it up by hand really, but I'm going to uh, take it inside and just hold it up a bit more and, and get the lighter on it, just hopefully that will set that in place. And then that's going to go towards the top of the tank there, uh, as I say, as the vent pipe, and then seal one of those off, and then the other one's just going to have the clunk on the end. So I'm going to get all those bits done. I'm going to call it a night just for now, but um, 
Next uh, clip I'll show you uh, the fuel tank put together with the clunking and everything and just show you how that fits uh, with obviously a band. I, I, will, I am going to have to get some fuel proof rubber bands and I think I might have some here. I think that's a fuel proof rubber band so I might be able to use that. So that should be good. Uh, yeah so uh, next clip I'll show you that and then once we've got the fuel tank in next job there the instructions are a little bit all over the place to be honest it goes from mounting the control horn to mount, putting the engine mount in to fuel tank then doing the undercarriage then back onto the engine so it seems a bit strange really the way they've done all that but um, oh and then in between that putting the servos in I think what I'm going to do is just basically work my way back so I'm going to get focused on getting all this engine section done um, and probably getting the cow lined up I think um, before I've um, start work on putting all these servos in the back so um, yeah I think that's the way I'm going to tackle it and then I'll probably put the undercarriage on at the end so I'll go engine fuel tank area get the servos mounted in there then we've got the control services at the back to mount and set up. Um, then obviously you've got the wings, but the wings are fairly straightforward really. It's just a case of mounting the servos in the wings. I shall show you that in due course. Um, and then we've just got the little extras really, like getting the throttle cable linked up to the engine um, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, all good fun. Um, but as I say, I'm going to call it a night for now and uh, I'll show you the fuel tank once I'm done. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I was last in the workshop. Um, the fuel proof has all gone off nicely now in here. And as you saw, I got this in place. But I just had to cut those tabs off the bottom to get that put in place. Um, I've um, mounted the uh, engine mount and lock tightened the bolts, so that's all sorted. And the other thing I've been doing is uh, just getting this um, fuel tank set up. So it does actually tell you to use, a, it's a bit of a bizarre thing to be honest, all the fuel tanks I normally have have got brass pipes or metal pipes, but uh, this one's plastic and it actually tells you to use a, a uh, cigarette lighter there to um, bend this uh, vent tube upwards. Um, but what I've done is um, I actually use my heat gun, um, which is the one I use for covering. So this old thing, but because it doesn't get absolutely red hot, it's not like a paint stripping heat gun. It's just designed for putting the covering on. So that worked perfectly. So I I, uh, I bent this up, held it in position, then heated it up, and it, it seems to have done the job there, as you can see. So the idea of that is that's going to stick at the top of the tank, just to uh, put some pressure into the tank. But obviously, you don't want any fuel to get down here. And then, because I'm not going to use the filler pipe. Um, I've just put a little piece of fuel tubing on there and I'll just put a, a little stop in there that I've got um, and then the pickup one obviously I put a piece of the silicon fuel tube on there got the clunk on fortunately it doesn't look like it's got a filter this clunk but it's fine I'll put an inline filter in which I always do with all my engines um, before it gets to the carb so we quite simply just got to put this in here Make sure my vent pipe's at the top there. Just sort of squeeze it in. And get this into position like that. Make sure that rubber seal's all the way round. And then I've got the clunk obviously set up. So I don't know if you can, you won't see on the camera I think, but um, no, you can't, you can't see, but uh, basically the clunk is touching, almost touching the back, but it moves really nicely when I twist it around like this. I mean, you can hear it moving. Um, so that's, I'm quite pleased with that. That's, that's exactly as it should be set up. So it should drain every last bit of fuel in the tank, but it's got good movement for when it's going upside down, etc. So that's that. Um, so I've just got to tighten this screw up here just to secure that in place, which I'll just quickly do now. Might actually just nick that up with a better screwdriver right I think that is about as tight as that's going to go so then um, actually let me just put my 
and done. Now this little tin I've had for a long time, probably about 25 years or so with various little bits and I've still got some of these little caps. Um, seem alright, I mean this is pretty old plastic but seems to be okay so I'll just push that in the end there. Um, that might need to be a little bit longer actually to be honest. So I'll just grab another piece. Okay, so that's got that blocked off there, like that, so that's good. Uh, and then, basically we just push the fuel tank in here, which is going to go through like that nicely. So I just need, in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my Sharpie Um, and I'm just going to put a P and an E. Something like that, if you can see that. Uh, just basically P for pickup, E for exhaust. So I know um, which one I need to connect to where. So yeah, that's going to go in there, and then what you do, according to the instructions, is you get an elastic band, and you hook the elastic band around these, let me just show you this, if I can, um, see that there, so you hook the elastic band around that there, and then there's one on the other side, and in theory, it should sort of keep the tank in place, so let's see. Right, a little bit fiddly to get that on, but uh, it's not too bad. So you can see how that works there. It's not a bad little system actually for holding it in place, because um, that's really quite hard to sort of pull back now, and of course it just springs back into place. So we'll see how we go with that. Um, if it proves to be a bit of a pain, and it keeps coming undone or whatever, I might just break this former, oh, I've always got that option to break this back out and put something like a, a slack tank in there, but we'll, we'll try it for now and, and see how it goes. Should be plenty, I'm not sure how big this tank is. Um, I don't know if it tells me in the instructions. No, it doesn't tell you. But for a 50 size engine, that should be a decent size really. You should probably, <coughs> I would have said get at least 10 minutes out of that I would have thought flight time. Um, so that's that done. Now if you sort of follow along the instructions it then bizarrely just moves into setting up the undercarriage and the wheel pants and shows you where to mount the battery, installing the battery which I don't know it just seems a bit of an odd thing to be doing at this stage. Um, so it seems like the instructions are kind of all over the place but I'm certainly not going to do that just yet. Um, but what I might move on to just now is just getting the servos installed in this main section here. And then I think once I've done the servos, um, I'm then going to move on to uh, installing the cow, which is obviously always a tricky bit. So, uh, servo wise, I have purchased four of these. Um, so these are McGregor servos, metal geared. Uh, digital servos as well. Um, these will run at six volts, which is what I'm going to use. So uh, these are quite nice things. Um, so I thought I'd get some reasonable servos to put in this rather than just going for real budget ones all the time. Although I've not had any issues with any of the budget ones. Um, so I'm going to get these put in here. So let's just get one of these open angle this down a little bit. Just angle the camera down a little bit so you can see. So yeah, fairly standard stuff, standard size servo. 
Um, now, someone did put a comment on my unboxing video that they'd got one of these and they'd got a four stroke up front, uh, which is obviously quite heavy, and they still found that it was really quite tail heavy. So they said they moved the throttle servo up to the front. Um, I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, they're not that heavy, really, in the grand scheme of things, so I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, I mean, what are these? Probably uh, 55 grams, so I mean, it, I guess it will make a little bit. But um, what I'm probably going to do is mount it where it should be, which is in, uh, in there for the throttle servo. Uh, and then you've got the elevator and uh, rudder servos there. So I'm going to get these mounted, but I've got a big battery that I'm probably going to put in this, which will be quite heavy. Um, I can't remember what it is exactly. It's something like a 4,000 milliamp battery or something like that, but it's quite a big, big chunky thing. But if I've got to put weight in the nose, may as well make most of that weight battery, at least then, you know, you're going to get longer flight times out of the battery. But uh, anyway, we'll see. You never know. Um, this one might turn out okay, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So, um, fairly standard stuff, obviously mounting the servos. It's got to feed the lead through. Let's just hope, no, they get, looks like the slots are slightly too small, which is really annoying because, you know, it just winds me up that does because it just means I've got to mess around now making the slot bigger when really it should, you know, it sh that should be the standard size servo slot. These are just standard servos. Um, so yeah, not ideal. So I'm going to probably have to cut that with my scalpel um, just to open that up a bit. So I'll get that done. We'll get the three servos mounted. Um, I'll show you that once I've uh, fiddled around with those bits. Right then, got the servos mounted. Now you might notice there, there's two purple and one pink. So I forgot actually what my plan was. Um, so I've got the two McGregor servos for the elevator and rudder. And then the other two that I've got in the box. Um, so th these two, they're going to be for the ailerons. And then the throttle servo is um, just one of the sort of Tower Pro. Um, but it is uh, metal geared, it is digital, and it is a um, six volt servo. So it's pretty much the same spec as the others, but um, that uh, obviously the throttle doesn't need to be, it's not the end of the world if that server goes wrong for some reason, but it should be absolutely fine. All it's doing is the throttle, so it's not under any particular load or anything like that. A um, little bit fiddly getting the, um, sorry, you can't see. It's a little bit fiddly with these McGregor ones getting the rubber grommets in. Um, now, interestingly, they are exactly the same as the JX servos I used in my Porter, PC6 Porter. Um, so it does make me think that these potentially are just JX servos rebranded as, uh, as McGregor, but I don't know. But one thing you can tell is, is just by turning the servos, if you, if you can hear this, let me move it up to my mic. The, McGregor servos are really nice and smooth and quiet and then this Tower Pro one is <laughs> sounds a lot rougher and louder even though it's uh, it's brand new but it should be fine anyway like I say on the throttle so um, servos in uh, fuel tanks in so next job I'm going to do now is I'm going to sort of leave the back end now for a little bit and I'm going to get stuck into mounting the engine again i'm only going to mount it temporarily so i'm not going to permanently mount it um but just get a couple of uh, get get the engine mount drilled out get a couple of bolts in there get it mounted and then uh, i want to start taking a look at offering up the cowl and getting that cut out because that's always one of the worst bits of doing something like this is getting the cow cut um so i think once i've got that done I can sort of relax a little bit i've been looking on YouTube and I found a brilliant method for uh, doing that. Um, so that's what I'm going to try. So I'll, I shall show you that anyway. I'll go through all that on the next video. So if you've enjoyed watching this, then please give me a thumbs up, give me a like. 2023 is hopefully going to be the, well, not hopefully, it is going to be the year that I hit a thousand subscribers. So if you're watching this, and I know a lot of people who watch my videos 
majority of people that watch the videos aren't subscribers, please hit that subscribe button. It's free, doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me out massively. And uh, you know, the more subscribers I get, the more motivated I am to just keep on doing these videos. Um, so yeah, hope you're enjoying what I'm doing here. And again, happy new year. Although by the time I put this video out, it could be well into Jan, but uh, nevertheless, hope 2023 is a good one for, for everyone. Hope people get lots of flying in, lots of model building, and uh, I'll see you soon for the next one.